Now, unemployment has stayed stable at 4.2% in the three months to August. This comes as hundreds of thousands of UK workers will see a 10% pay rise because their employer is signed up to something called the Voluntary Real Living Wage Scheme. Yes, this uh, wage, this real living wage, will increase to reflect the ongoing cost of living crisis for workers. But joining us in the studio, we have our economics and business editor, Liam Halligan. Now, we've got a number of things to get through. Where would you like to start? Well, it's a year on since Rishi Sunak entered number 10, and basically the economy is flatlining. It's not in recession. Uh, the German economy is in recession, but it's not doing nearly as well as the US economy, which is actually growing quite well. Let's have a look at some of the data that's come out today. As you said, Tom, unemployment is pretty much unchanged at 4.2 percent, still very low by historic standards. That's between June and August this year. Um, but of course, there are an awful lot of people who just aren't part of the workforce anymore, the kind of missing millions. So that's a slightly flattering number. We have GDP numbers that come out, the official numbers on the size of the economy, but we have indicative survey numbers from the private sector which kind of preempt the GDP numbers. They're called the Purchasing Managers Index. And a Purchasing Managers Index reading of 50 plus means growth and less than 50 means less than growth. And check this out. Mm. Our manufacturing sector, still about 15% of the UK economy, 452 in October, slightly up on September, but still but, less but than predicting 50. predicting a contraction in the future. Yeah, that's right. That's pointing to a slowdown in manufacturing when the official GDP numbers for October come out. The service sector, which of course is 80% of our economy, not just financial services, but hospitality, a whole host of other things. Uh, that's at 49.2. That's down slightly from 49.3 in September, so just below 50. So the economy is flatlining one year on from Rishi Sunak taking over. And of course, the next interest rate decision is on Thursday, the 2nd of November. That's next Thursday. I personally think, given that the economy is flatlining, mm. I think the Bank of England will keep interest rates on hold at five and a quarter percent. This is interesting because the, the, the PMI figures suggest that actually we might have a small contraction, although I guess there, there's sort of wiggle room there. It might be slight growth, slight negative growth. Um, if you're the Chancellor, that's a very unhappy picture to be looking at, probably less tax revenue coming in than, than you might want. But if you're the Bank of England, uh, or if you're looking at wanting interest rates to be at least stable, the fact that our economy isn't overheating is probably indicative of, of, of stable interest rates. Indeed, and the Bank of England will stand accused of driving the economy into a recession. We've got, already got 14 interest rate rises in the mm. tank, and they're now really starting to feed through. You can see it in the credit numbers, the demand for credit, the amount of credit banks are extending. Uh, that's slowing down the economy quite seriously now. But still, the British economy is battling, battling, battling. Mm. We're not yet in recession. A recession is two successive quarters of mm. contraction. So that's basically six months bar the shouting of negative PMI numbers or PMI numbers below 50. We've got one month there, and these things do bob around. These are surveys of business leaders, business owners, how they think it's going. They're not official numbers. But so if it's 49 or 51, it's all yeah, sort it, of much of a much. That, that's right. But yeah. look, the basic reality of this is um, the UK economy, the world economy, hasn't really recovered from the pandemic yet. We were meant to have this massive post-pandemic bounce back. Mm. It hasn't really happened. The Chinese economy is growing slowly by its standards, which is slowing down the rest of the world. Well, with the the Euros are, of youth unemployment yeah, in China. They've stopped publishing the youth unemployment numbers in China because they're so embarrassing mm. for, for, for um, President Xi and, and, the, and the People's Republic. Um, but look, it strikes me that the economy is doing just about OK. It's on a knife edge. The Bank of England, I would be really surprised if they raised rates next week. Of course, more data could come out between now and then. Um, so if you've got a mortgage, it seems that you're not going to have to endure yet another interest rate rise. But if, again, if you're uh, interested in rate rises for savings, then you're not going to get any, any extra money either. Mm. Look, has Rishi Sunak done enough? I don't think so. The next, the next election is going to be all about the economy. They always are. Mm. It, the economy always dominates politics in the end. Sorry, but it's true. Rishi Sunak did steady the ship after Liz Truss, mm. but it's not as if the UK economy is booming. And the other thing about these slow growth numbers, Tom, they're going to really put pressure on Jeremy Hunt, who's rumoured to be standing down from his seat in Surrey, of course. He quite, won't quite confirm. Big pressure on him now from his own backbenchers 
for tax cuts. You've got former ministers like Jake Berry, Ranald Jai Wardner, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Priti Patel, Liz Truss, of course. They're part of the Conservative growth group. Mm. I hear that that is now 65 MPs, which is bigger than the government's majority. So if this autumn statement... Uh, on the 22nd of November, tries to put taxes up, mm. a lot of Tory MPs aren't going to vote for it. And then you could have a no-confidence issue.